Welcome back to the Vintage Telephones channel. Today I'm going to show you this North Electric Telephone. It's called the N541 and North Electric, of course, operated out of Galleon, Ohio. This was their version of the Model 500 that had long already been introduced because they, they were introduced in 1949. So this was, uh, I'm not sure what year it is, but this is what uh, they came up with to modernize their telephones. So they are getting away from the um, the 7H6, if I remember on the top of my head, which is the Galleon, quote unquote. So this was their way of modernizing their uh, telephone. A lot of people say it still has its Art Deco look. You can see the lines here and, and the curves and everything. Now this telephone, now the black one's not too rare because you can still find them. It's the matter of finding them in the other colors and they had a plethora of colors. Example, Emperor Blue, Tawny Green, Executive Gray, Richland Red, so on and so forth. And most of them were fitted with the matching finger wheel, the same color for the rest of the phone. Others can be found with a clear finger wheel. Now these dials are kind of unique because they are recessed. Notice how it's at the same level of the bezel. Uh, I can't remember, I know this is a North Electric dial, but from what I've seen, and this type of dial, they sort of copied the um, Elm Erickson dials. I don't know if they made them under license, but this is a different type of dial. Uh, they had two different type of dials before they switched to the, uh, using, you know, automatic electric or Kellogg dials. Uh, this one is one model, but there's another one that I have on another 7H6 that uh, is considered a self-oiling dial. Of course, that one was dried out, so I had to re-oil it. But I can't remember, I'm not sure what model numbers they are, but they had two different dials when they were still making their own dials for their telephones. Anyway, the 541, um, I'm thinking this might be a 546 because from the designation uh, 541 would have a straight cord, but this one has a curly cord, you know, it's coiled. And from the list of the numbers they had on there, if it has a coiled cord, it'd be a 546, but it could have been switched off later on to a coiled cord, so it still could be a 541. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll find out when we open up the telephone. Now some of these telephones, I'm not sure what type of ringer it'll have. It might have a bell ringer, but uh, I'm not sure if it's a straight line or a frequency ringer. But uh, besides the ringer, you know, the bell ringers, they also had electronic ringers as well. So we'll we'll find out what, what this phone has. I'm pretty sure it's a bell ringer though. So yeah, so of course this is in the basic black. Got this for a good deal on eBay. I saw it and thought, well, there was no one bidding on it, so, uh, well, finally have one in the collection. Wasn't one I had been looking for, but, you know, it's kind of nice to find things and find out what they are like. But I understand that the innards are very similar to a Western Electric 500, as far as layout goes. And I'll give you a closer look. Now you can tell on this bezel it's got the mold on it, so I'm gonna have to soak it. I might have to do the rest of the housings too. I'm gonna have to soak it in some bleach before I clean it up to kill the mold because it's uh, pretty yucky. Got a uh, fire uh, sticker here for the phone number for the fire, which is cool. And stick on number card here. And I think under here is the original number card. So we'll see what uh, is on there, if it's blank or has a number. I'm pretty sure we'll have a number on it. You can see the cords there, they're in good shape. They're a bit sticky, so uh, even the, the line cord is a coiled one, so I don't know if I'll keep that, because it's pretty yucky feeling. We got a four prong plug here as well. Look at the handset. We've got the North Electric Manufacturing Company, Galleon, Ohio, USA. And they have their own 
their handsets are pretty cool. I like the Art Deco design. They have their own little lines and seams and curves. And then here's the rest of the phone here. Notice I was explaining about the lines here, that Art Deco look. It's very nice. The dial's gonna need oiling. You know, it stops at one point. So I'm gonna have to overhaul it. To me, it sounds a lot like an Ericsson dial too. As far as when <laughs> an Ericsson dial, when it needs oiling, it sounds like that when you turn it. It reminds me a lot like that. So I've worked with a lot of Ericsson dials. I kind of know how they sound when they need oiling. You can see a lot of scratches and dings and there's even a bit of a, a little, I don't know if you call it a ding by the screw. They might have slipped on the screwdriver and dinged up the uh, housing. Here's the back we got. When they copied the uh, Model 500, they also put their logo in a similar spot the way the Western Electric did for their telephones. What's cool about these uh, telephones is that uh, instead of the handset cords and the line cords coming out of the side with the little mouse holes, they actually come out from under the, the base. I don't even know what this phone, I don't, I don't know the year of it. We'll find out. So yeah, that's uh, no markings on the bottom. I'm thinking this might be a frequency bell ring or cause there's no adjuster. We'll find out. What we'll do next is I will, uh, I will pop the hood in the next section of the video. So we'll be right back. Now that I got the cover off, we'll take a look at the inside. So uh, it looks like we have, it was fitted under here, but it's the piece of paper, it's the wiring diagram. I will scan that and post it at the end of the video as a picture. So we'll take a look at that at the end. Uh, so I'll set that aside. So it looks like, I looked under the dial here and it looks like, let's see, February 1957. It looks, the little seven there looks all distorted, but it's definitely 57. And it's, interestingly, it's got a 425B uh, network. And it looks like it's from 1955. And then it looks a lot like a 500 on the inside. I think this is a frequency ringer. I could be wrong, but it's got a bias spring. Very interesting spring. I've never seen one like this before, but if it needs to be adjusted for it to ring, then I could probably loosen this up a little bit so I don't have to worry about uh, putting in a straight line ringer for ringing demonstration. But I might be able to loosen that up a bit. But it feels like it feels like a frequency ringer. The weight has a bit of uh, resistance on it. So there's the bells. Actually, both of these. Let me get the. Uh, screwdriver, they have the uh, same tone. On that. And then, there's the dial. This one looks like it's fitted, not with screws, but I think with, uh, let's see, I might be able to get this off with one hand squeeze it. I might be able to squeeze it. Let me set this real quick. Okay, got it. Reminds me of <laughs> the way the the dials on the LM Erickson dialogues are also fitted in a similar way with uh, these uh, you know, with resistance. I don't know if that's the way you call the clip in. And then flip it over. So 
So if you've ever seen an LM Erickson dial, they look very similar to this format here. Only difference is that uh, the govern is a bit different. And it's fitted a different way than it is on an Ericsson dial. But this is how their dials look. Even the contacts remind me of that same format. It sounds, it sounds a lot like an, L, uh, an Ericsson dial. Of course, it's, it needs oiling. That's what they look like. Let's see if there's any... Markings, let's see, 57, February 1957, so it's, good. it's from the same month and year. I'll have to check the spring to make sure nothing's wrong with it, because it feels, it feels a little bit funny. Could be just needs oiling, or, or it needs to be wound up more, or replaced, I, there's no telling right now. I'll, I'll figure that out once I get this dial apart. So, yeah. And then, now that I got that inset, the elements on the inside, Let's see, this looks like a a lot like a G style one. T one. I'm thinking it's a I can't tell. I think it's, it might be a Northern electric and not a Western electric because their markings are different. Usually they're vermilion from what I've seen for Western electric. I think Northern electric used the black for their markings. It's 1956. So yeah, that's a look at the, uh, there's no telling if it's a 541 or 546. I'll find out from the wiring diagram. But that's a look at the uh, North Electric. I'm going to call it a 541 for now because that's what I think it is. And uh, once I get this phone done, I will post a final checkout video. So um, the diagram will be posted at the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed this. And thank you very much for watching.